Okay guys, so this is just a quick little update on how everything is going. Uh, until further notice, I'll probably make one of these a day because it takes me about 20 minutes um, and just kind of keep you up to date. Uh, had a great spring break, hope you did too. These are some pictures of my son just to make you feel better about yourself. Hopefully everyone is doing well. Uh, so the day today, I've got two of them because it's been a while. Uh, we've got Byzantine, which means to be devious, sneaky, or complicated, uh, such as my teacher has a Byzantine grading system. Yesterday I had an 80, today I have a 60, and even he doesn't know why. Uh, Byzantine typically gets used whenever you're, you've got like a, like an overly complicated system that's designed to make something uh, fail or to make something more difficult than it should be. Uh, dearth is a shortage of something. Uh, there was a dearth of meat at H-E-B, except for cow tongue and chicken feet. True story. Went to the grocery store last night, had plenty of cow tongue and chicken feet. Uh, nothing else. A um, little bit of menudo. Uh, but other than that, pretty, pretty empty. Okay, since I'm not teaching anything, I just thought I'd give you a few uh, other stuff here. Uh, this is a book of the day recommendation. It's actually an author today, but I'll probably do a book of the day tomorrow. Uh, this is one of my favorite authors, Brandon Sanderson. He writes incredibly uh, good fantasy fiction. Um, it's a little bit, you know, formulaic. Very rarely does anything happen to the good guys. It's not going to trick you, uh, but it's kind of like a Marvel movie. You know, like Marvel movies, you're pretty sure everything's gonna work out. I know the snap happened, but then the next movie fixed it, you know? Uh, occasionally people will die, but it's usually for the greater good, and it's a heroic death, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but <clears throat> in a in a time where there's a lot of crisis, it's sometimes fun to see the heroes win. Uh, particular recommendation, Way of Kings, incredibly good. Uh, it's the start of a series, as is Mistborn, uh, and I've read Elantris, Warbreaker. I've got most of these. The thing that's interesting about Brandon Sanderson is he does a really good job about building up his worlds, and they have a fun magic system usually. Uh, for instance, in Mistborn, uh, the magic system is that like people can burn metals, uh, and each metal they burn gives them a different power. Uh, but he's also very good about like putting limits on the amount of power people can draw from their uh, magical ability, which is kind of fun. Uh, because it means that she can, or it means that like the main character has uh, a limit, uh, and it's fun to watch them work around how that limit uh, affects them. Um, science fact of the day: thought you might want to know one of these. This is kind of interesting. It's about electrons. So uh, there was a electron double slit experiment that was done, and uh, basically. Whenever they did, we, we talked about a double slit where like light passes through the double slit and it creates a wave pattern on the background where you get constructive and destructive interference. That was that Veritasium video we watched with the guy that was making the waves in the water. Um, so electrons were thought to be particles. And so they thought that if you passed electrons through a double slit like you see here, that what would happen was is you'd get just a series of dots in the shape of the two slits in the background. So basically you would just get something like this as the result where you had all these like uh, electrons impacting on the back and you would have just two slits. But what actually happened, and this was what people were not expecting, is you got that same wave pattern where you got series of like peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs. And uh, that was interesting because it meant that electrons were behaving like waves. Um, they even uh, made it so where only one electron could come out at a time, which meant that there was only one electron passing through either one of these slits at a time, and it still created the wave pattern, which is very interesting because it meant the electron was technically interfering with itself, which was just mind-boggling. Now, the completely mind-boggling thing is, is if you set the detector at the back, it creates the wave pattern. But if you set the detector at the front, where the, uh, where the slits are, it behaves like a particle, uh, which is very neat because it means that uh, it means that the electrons act differently when they're observed than when they're not observed. So whenever you observe an electron, it collapses what's known as the wave function and causes the electron to behave like a particle. And whenever you don't observe the electron, it behaves like a wave. 
And so it's only whenever you observe the electron that it breaks down its wave characteristic and becomes a particle. It's a mind-blowing part, part of uh, science. I encourage you to take a deep dive into YouTube science uh, and look up uh, electrons as waves and particles. Turns out not only electrons, but pretty much all particles are, uh, including you, our waves, it's just that we're really big and so our waves are very, very small. The smaller you are, the bigger your wave. The bigger you are, the smaller your wave. Kind of an interesting thing to look into. And the final thing here, uh, this is a history fact of the day because why not? You know, I, I, got a, I got a degree in history. So this is about Bucephalus. Bucephalus was the horse of Alexander the Great. So uh, when Alexander was 13, he told his father there was this herd of horses, and he said, I'm going to train that one that's the, the like meanest one. Uh, and his father was like, yeah, sure, whatever, dude. Go do it. And so Alex went out, and he trained Bucephalus uh, to be his horse at the age of 13. Now, Alexander, you might know, lived to be the age of 33, and his horse did not die until Alex was well into uh, his campaigns. His horse actually died in uh, Jaipur, India, uh, on campaign, I believe when Alexander was like 31 or 2, and so that means that that horse lived for like 20 years. Every battle that Alexander went into, and he went into dozens of battles, Bucephalus was at the forefront with him because Alexander was riding him. So, uh, cool story about a horse. Uh, he is one of the only... Alexander went through, whenever he like conquered new places, he always named a city after himself. So there was like Alexandria, Egypt, and there was Alexandrias all over the world, uh, all over the, the ancient world. But there was one town that was called Bucephalus, uh, because, or actually it was called Bucephalon, because he named it after his horse. Um, so there you go, Bucephalus, one of the most famous horses in history. He's more famous than Seabiscuit if you take into like the account of, you know, time. Lots of time has passed since Bucephalus. All right, and finally, here's a video of my son playing with a goat.